Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Virginia and today I am so excited because I am kicking off the spring craft season with today's video. Today I'm going to be showing you a compilation of all of my favorite spring and Easter DIYs. Let's waste no time and get right into the first craft. Our first DIY is I think my favorite one and it is this adorable bunny DIY using some free paint sticks as a fence. Here are all of the supplies you'll need to recreate this. The most important supply in this DIY are a set of paint sticks. I actually picked these up from Home Depot. If you go to the paint section, you can usually get them for free. I asked if they sold them and the guy just gave me a bunch of them, which was really nice. And then a couple of the paint sticks are actually ones that I had and I have used before. I'm taking the shade Elephant by Waverly and I am painting all of the paint sticks. Eventually we will take some white paint and really distress them. So the gray is really going to be more of the secondary color. They're going to be mainly white, but just to get a good base down, I am laying down the gray color. All right, and now comes the main color. I am taking some white paint and very heavy handedly distressing these paint sticks. I really want white to be the main color just with bits of gray poking through. So I'm going in pretty heavy handed and I wouldn't even say distressing as much as just painting. And a couple of the paint sticks, when I flipped them over, got stuck to the craft paper that I'm painting on. So I flipped both ends of the paint stick so I can paint both and it'll look better. I plan to probably put this on my mantle I think for Easter but if I don't at least I know that the back will look good too because they will also be painted and all finished. I'm definitely trying to consciously do that more with my projects, paint the backs of them so it's not like when you turn the project around it's really ugly on one side and not painted or finished, but it does take a bit more time, but that's kind of one of my crafting resolutions for the new year is to finish both the front and back of all of my crafting projects. So for this, I cut out a bunny and I could not find any Easter stuff in my Dollar Trees except for some jute carrots and a couple wood ornaments. They just really haven't come out with the Easter stuff yet, but I already wanted to start decorating. So I kind of had to make this on my own. I found a bunny silhouette image on Google and then I printed it out and traced it onto this. It's called a craft board. It is thicker than a paper, but not as thick as cardboard. If you see it in your Hobby Lobby or Michaels, it again is called craft board. To cover the board, I traced the bunny out onto a white washcloth and then cut it out before hot gluing it. I liked using the washcloth better than scrapbooking paper, not only for the texture, I thought it resembled more of a bunny's fur, but also you didn't have to be quite as precise when you were cutting it out. There were a few sections where I might've cut a bit too much, but because it was a washcloth, I was able to pull and stretch the fabric a little bit to make sure that none of the craft board was peeking out from underneath of our washcloth. For the bunny's bow, I tried a little bit of a different bow than I usually do. I went with a X bow and I took some burlap ribbon as well as this kind of dark orange and brown gingham pattern and I laid the orange on top of the burlap and then I just made an X and then to tie it all together and cinch it in at the middle, I took this lime green colored ribbon and just tied that into a knot. And then once that bow was ready to go, I put it on to the bunny and was able to figure out how short I wanted the bow and was able to cut it a little bit more. A good tip if you want to make the dovetails on the ends, or in this case, the ends and the tops of my ribbon, you can just fold the ribbon in half and cut at a slight angle like I'm doing right now, and that will create that dovetail effect for you. All right, so now is the really exciting part because we are going to create our fence. 
and I didn't get too precise. I didn't bring out the measuring tape. I just kind of eyeballed how far apart I wanted the paint sticks to be. Two of the paint sticks, I cut off that area where it kind of bows in. And so that's how I knew how long I wanted my fence to be and how much space needed to be in between each of them. And then once I knew how long or wide the fence needed to be, I just kind of eyeballed and spaced out the paint sticks from there. I did start with the bottom one and kind of stand the paint sticks up just to make sure that all of them touched the ground and there wasn't one that was higher up than another because then it wouldn't be able to stand on its own and once the bottom fence was on it was easy to just hot glue the top section on as well. After that, I hot glued down our bunny into the center lower part of the fence and just pressed down to make sure that he stayed in place. Now we are going to finish off our bunny fence with some embellishments. I got this amazing, super long strand of wood beads in the fall, but I have seen in some lucky people's Dollar Trees, they are coming out with these again. So if you see them, definitely pick them up. And to act as a thread, I took these really tiny scissors from the Dollar Tree and wrapped the jute around them so that I could thread it through the jute carrot. And then on the other end, I also placed three of the small wooden Dollar Tree beads. So once I had both of my carrot bead garlands ready to go, it was time to tie them on opposite ends of the fence. I had the jute going around the two outer to the right and to the left paint sticks. And this was kind of hard to show on camera. I knew where I wanted the carrots to hang, but then flipping it over and tying it, I was trying to stay in the shot, but also trying to make sure the carrots didn't move around. So this was actually easy to do. It was just hard to do on camera. So it might look a little bit difficult, but all that I did was put them in the back and hot glue them into place. And then I adjusted the carrot and the beads to make sure that it still looked good. And I did add a little bit of hot glue to the carrot just to make sure that that stayed in place and it didn't move around too much. There are so many different ways to use paint sticks. I'm definitely gonna be using them in future DIYs. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever used them in a craft project. Next up is a very easy to make rustic spring DIY using some unlikely supplies from the garden section of the Dollar Tree. Here are all of the other things that you'll need to recreate this project. The first step in this project is going to be painting these styrofoam Easter eggs. I said it earlier, my Dollar Tree doesn't have a ton of Easter or even spring stuff out yet, but luckily I did snag this bag of styrofoam eggs. I know that they came out with the craft eggs last year too, so I was happy to see them again. I did paint them white even though they already came white and then I was just flicking some of this dark brown paint onto them to give it a speckled effect. While I waited for the paint to dry on the eggs, I moved on to the picture frame, which is going to be the main base for this DIY. So I took out all of the backing and the glass from the picture frame. And also you could see these little black stoppers that hold the contents in place. So I just took some needle nose pliers and just pulled those out. They come out really easy in the Dollar Tree frames so that they wouldn't be seen. Then I took my Waverly white chalk paint and painted the entire brown frame in this white color. And I did end up using about two coats to make sure that the entire frame was completely opaque and covered. And to turn it from this modern white into a nice rustic farmhouse DIY, I am of course distressing it with my favorite dark brown paint from Apple Barrel in Burnt Umber. I also took an Apple Barrel chip brush. This is really nice to use while you're distressing. And I am just dirtying this up, making sure that I keep my brush going in one direction. So I am just going all around the edges and the center area, adding in that brown color. So now we're taking the unlikely supply that is found in the Dollar Tree garden section. I've seen this each spring, so keep your eye out because they go really quick and it is chicken wire. But of course, we're not gonna be using it in gardening or to keep any chickens at bay. We're gonna be using it for decor. And I am just adding hot glue to keep all of this in place. Usually I will use binder clips 
inside of my fingers to be able to hold this down while the glue dries. But in this case, the frame was too thick so the binder clips couldn't fit. So I just had to put on a YouTube video to keep myself company while I held the chicken wire in place until the glue dried. To form the egg wreath, at first I thought about getting a long piece of floral wire and threading that through the styrofoam eggs, but a much easier way to do it was just using hot glue. The only difficult part was figuring out how many eggs that I wanted to use. At one point I remove an egg, but I did decide that seven looked really good, so I kept all of them. And the nice thing about the hot glue is that it was very flexible and pliable, so I was able to really mold the wreath and make sure that it had a nice shape and wasn't turning into an oval rather than a circular wreath. And to finish off the wreath, I took some raffia and just made a double bow before hot gluing that on to the top section of our egg wreath. For the last step, I hot glued the egg wreath onto the frame section to complete the DIY. I really love this DIY because it's a very subtle hint of spring to your regular decor. So if you're not huge into seasonal decor, I think this is a really nice way to incorporate spring. The next DIY requires very minimal supplies and the main one you can actually find in your own backyard. Here is everything else that you'll need to make this DIY on your own. Like I said in the first DIY, I just haven't been able to find very much Easter decor or Easter craft supplies at my Dollar Tree. And one of the things that I was really looking for was a sign that had a bunny cutout on it, but we still only have Valentine's Day stuff up at my Dollar Trees. Let me know in the comments below if you've been getting any Easter stuff in. So just like the first DIY, I found a bunny silhouette image on Google and just used that to trace out this bunny shape on some craft board. So that's what I'm going to be using today. And like I said, also the main supply in this is going to be sticks that I just found outside in my backyard. My puppy helped me. He was a very good at finding the sticks, but not so good at letting me take the sticks from his mouth. But you know, he tried. And what I'm doing at first, so I got a bunch of the sticks and I started breaking them off to try to get them to fit perfectly onto this bunny silhouette. I did use the puzzle saver. It's basically like a Mod Podge. That's the only way I can really describe it. I haven't been able to find a difference between it and Mod Podge, but I used that for the majority. I did go back in with a glue stick, which I'll show you in just a moment. But for the majority of the bunny, I am just using this puzzle saver glue and laying down different bits of the twigs. It kind of was like a puzzle because I found certain twigs really fit with this shape or one worked for the curve of the bunny. So I'm just laying down a bunch of the sticks and breaking them so that they fit perfectly into the bunny silhouette. I continued fitting the sticks and breaking them like puzzle pieces to fit within the bunny. But then when I got to the ear section, some of the points of the ears were so tiny, it was really hard to cut the sticks that small. So I ended up just hot gluing down some of the sticks and I used hot glue here. One, because I got impatient and didn't want to wait the 30 minutes to an hour for the puzzle saver glue to dry. And second, for the ears, I really wanted to make sure that everything was down and secure. So this is when I switched over to the hot glue gun. And you can see I took my miter shears, my favorite ones off Amazon. I always have them linked down below in my Amazon favorites. And once I had all of the sticks lined up, I just took the miter shears and cut off any excess pieces of the twigs and the sticks. And this worked out really well. And then for the second ear, a lot of the pieces that I had cut off from the first ear fit pretty perfect onto that second ear. And then we're moving on to what I think is one of the hardest DIYs I have ever done. And it's probably very easy for a lot of you and you might laugh, but I made my first pom-pom. So I picked up this pom-pom maker at the Dollar Tree and the directions on the back just made like no sense. So this is actually my fifth attempt at a pom-pom, first attempt creating, I think, a pretty good pom-pom. So what you're gonna do is pull out, I don't even know what you call these, but the two 
things that swing out and you're going to swing both of them out. They kind of create like an S and start wrapping your yarn around the two of these and just go ahead and keep wrapping and wrapping. The more yarn that you wrap around this, I'll call it a rainbow because it kind of looks like a rainbow to me. The more yarn that you wrap around the rainbow, the thicker and more voluminous your pom-pom is going to be. Just make sure that you don't get any of the yarn trapped in the feet area. So this, I'm calling it the feet because it looks like the footer on a sewing machine. You're going to close your rainbow so that it is now touching the other rainbow. Pull the yarn through the feet and then start wrapping it around this second rainbow. I hope that maybe combined with this voiceover and the visual that this will make sense. If it doesn't, there are dedicated like 20 minute videos on YouTube on how to create a pom pom, probably better than I'm explaining. So you can always check those out. And now I'm doing the exact same process, just covering this rainbow in a bunch of the white yarn just looping it and looping it and looping it. You're gonna go ahead and snip off the end and close that second rainbow. So now you have this circle shape and here is one you can go in with some scissors and cut all of the yarn down the center. This is why those two little prongs were used together so that you now have this section where you can slip your scissors in and cut the yarn of your pom-pom. And once you have cut this section, you are going to take a second piece of yarn and thread this through the middle of the circle and tie a knot. So this is gonna be what actually keeps your pom-pom held together. And the yarn fits very easily inside of the pom-pom maker. You can do a double knot if you think that's necessary. I just did one and thought that that was secure enough. So then you have tied your pom-pom, you are able to open up those rainbow prongs again, and then you're going to pull, and I kind of had to pull a little bit harder than I thought, and your pom-pom will come out. Also, all the Dollar Tree pieces fell apart. I looked at some YouTube videos, and that doesn't usually happen, but they snap back together really easily, and I was able to put it back together. So I'm not sure if that's supposed to happen. Maybe consider investing in one from Michaels or Hobby Lobby if you're an avid pom-pom maker, but you probably already knew this. But for me, who doesn't really make pom-poms except on the rare occasion, the Dollar Tree one actually worked out pretty well for me. So I trimmed down my bunny's cotton tail and then hot glued it to its little bum and added a raffia bow. This was a very rustic, outdoorsy rabbit, so I wanted to add a little bit of greenery, you know, some florals and foliage to him. So I took some little bits of a spring floral pick that I actually had from last year. I hope they bring these out again. And I added a couple of green leaves underneath the bow, as well as some really pretty purple flowers. Now we are going to move on to what will be displaying our twig or stick bunny. So I grabbed one of the medium size canvases from the crafter square section at the Dollar Tree. And then I took some scrap burlap that I had, I used it in a Valentine's Day DIY and I had some leftover. And I'm going to be covering the canvas with the burlap. And I realized during this DIY that I don't own a stapler. I need to pick one up next time I'm at the Dollar Tree. So I used hot glue rather than staples to adhere the burlap onto the canvas. I trimmed off the edges of the burlap because when I folded it over the canvas, it was a little bit bulky in the back and I want it to be able to lean flatly against a wall. So I'm just cutting off any of that excess fabric. And then it was time to attach my bunny to the canvas. But as I was looking at it, I originally wanted to do a paint stick border so it looked like some more faux wood, but the paint sticks were a little bit too large for this smaller canvas and it would take up too much. You wouldn't really see the burlap. So I went into my craft stash and I saw that I had these really large skewers from the Dollar Tree, some wooden skewers. I believe they're for s'mores so you don't have to get too close to the fire. And I thought this would make a really good smaller border than the paint stick or even rulers. So similar to the first DIY, I'm using this dark gray color called Elephant to paint the skewers and then I distress them with some white paint. And once again, using my handy dandy miter shears to cut down the skewers to fit 
the canvas so it would frame it really nicely. I put down the top one first and then had the two on the left and the right coming down off of the top one and then finished it off by hot gluing the bottom. And of course, the last step in this DIY is putting some hot glue on the back of our stick bunny and then hot gluing that down to the center of the frame. The next DIY is a really quick and easy one using one of these adorable stuffed bunnies from the Dollar Tree. Here's what you need to make it. This DIY is a super quick and easy one and we're starting off with this little stuffed bunny I found at the Dollar Tree. I placed some floral wire through the back of the bunny's ears. That way I would be able to shape and mold the ears the way that I liked without adding the wire. The ears laid really flat and you couldn't really see them. Like I've mentioned a couple times before, I haven't been too lucky in finding a ton of stuff at my Dollar Tree. So using the craft board that I had mentioned earlier, I did cut out the shape of an egg. And to cover that plain craft board, I picked up some of this pretty scrapbooking paper and I cut it out into the egg shape before adhering it down using a glue stick. I liked the plain egg, but I wanted to add a cute saying. So I picked this spring is in the air one and to finish off our decorative egg, I attached a little raffia bow using a glue dot from the Dollar Tree. And the whole point of this DIY is it's supposed to have the bunny hiding behind the egg and all that you can see are the bunny's cute little paws and feet and his ears sticking up. So that is why the egg is so much larger than the bunny. You could make a smaller egg so that you would see the bunny's cute face and it would be like he was holding it, but I wanted it to look like a giant egg that he couldn't carry and he was hiding behind. So to kind of achieve that a little bit more, I did pull his arms and his feet around the egg and hot glued them into place so it looked like he was struggling to hold up this big giant Easter egg. First off, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable bucket full of bunnies using some styrofoam eggs that you can find at your Dollar Tree. Here's everything else that you're going to need if you want to recreate this DIY on your own. For this DIY, I'm going to be making two of these jute bunnies and one using some white yarn. So we'll start off with the brown jute bunny. I am taking one of the styrofoam craft eggs from the Dollar Tree. And unfortunately, they of course did not come with bunny ears, so I had to make those. I just cut some bunny ears out of something that's called craft board. I talked about it a lot in my last video. It is thicker than a cardstock, but not quite as thick as a cardboard if you're looking for the consistency. And I just hot glued those to the top of our eggs. That is how when we wrap them in jute, they're going to look like bunnies instead of eggs. Now the Dollar Tree does come out with a variety of plastic eggs and they do have some plastic eggs that look like bunnies. They have bunny ears. I wasn't able to find those at my Dollar Tree. I'll try to pop up a picture from dollartree.com if I'm able to find them so that you know what you're looking for. And if you're able to find those plastic eggs, then you can skip the part of adding the ears. And now it is pretty simple. We're just going to be wrapping this entire project in the jute cord. It's a little bit difficult to start just at the bottom. You had to use quite a bit of hot glue to make sure everything stayed in place. But then the middle section was super easy. I only had to use a little bit of hot glue. As I am wrapping my egg slash bunny in the jute, I just wanted to give a little shout out since this DIY kind of gets me in the Easter spirit. I did start an Etsy shop. I had mentioned it a couple of videos back and I had some Valentine's Day items in my shop. I just wanted to really quickly plug two new items that are in my shop just because they're Easter related and kind of go with this overall bunny themed video. 
First, I have these really cute bunny bags. You can put jelly beans in them, gift cards, give them to your kids or maybe teachers. These are a really cute item. And then I also have, similar to the item that I had for Valentine's Day, a hot pad in a mint green color with a variety of Easter Saints. And now that I have mentioned all of that, you can see that I am almost at the part where I can start wrapping the jute around the ears. Once I made it to the top of that styrofoam egg, I just kept the same jute cord. I didn't cut it or anything and then just started wrapping it around the ears. These are pretty durable. Like I said, they are thicker than a craft paper, but I was pretty gentle when I was wrapping them just to make sure I didn't bend the craft board at all. And now I'm going in with my really tiny scissors that I have from the Dollar Tree Crafter Square section. And jute can kind of get some frays, so I'm just kind of trimming down the bunny and trimming off any of the frays that might have formed in the jute. Since I had to start with a new piece of jute, I just hot glued the beginning of it to what I'm going to have as the backside of my bunny, just so that you can't see where I placed the hot glue. And now to really make it look like a bunny, I know at the Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby, a lot of places, the little bunny bums are all the rage. So I took a small little white pom-pom and just hot glued it to the bottom back of the bunny to be their little cotton tail. I did the exact same process with some white yarn. I didn't want to show you guys that because it was literally the exact same thing that I did with the jute. So I figured you didn't need to see that twice. And I actually liked the yarn a little bit better just because I didn't have any of those frays, so I didn't have to trim anything. You can also use some more non-traditional colors, some bright Easter ones. You know, of course, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine in the white yarn or the jute. I grabbed one of the tins from the Dollar Tree and instead of filling it with floral foam because I'm trying to save my floral foam for a future project, I just stuffed down some scrap fabric that I had to fill up the tin and then placed some raffia on top before grabbing my bunnies and trying to position them in the tin bucket. I also added two of these jute carrots, but the bunnies were falling over a little bit in the raffia, so I had a bunch of skewers from the Dollar Tree, so I just cut those down to size and put those inside of the styrofoam bunnies as well as the carrots too. The skewers were a really great way to get all of them into position, and even though I wasn't sticking them into floral foam, I just kind of wiggled them down in between the folds of the fabric, and that worked just as well as floral foam for me. Keeping with the bunny and carrots theme, I am going to show you a new take on some carrot decor. This time we are going to be using ribbon as our main supply. Here's everything else that you'll need to make this. The Dollar Tree currently sells these peel and stick pieces of what they call wallpaper, but I think it's a really great way to use as a scrapbooking paper. So I just peeled the back off of this and placed it down onto a Dollar Tree wood sign that I already had. And I'm using this Mod Podge roller that I have just to make sure that everything is down and there are no bubbles anywhere. As a little bit of embellishment on our sign, I took two paint sticks and I painted them with a lightish color brown and then I went in with my stippling brush and really just stressed them with a darker brown. I used my always go-to miter shears to cut these down to size before grabbing some hot glue and gluing one to the top and one to the bottom of our sign. I also forgot to film this part, but I did take some of these gold thumbtacks that I had and I painted them with a silver paint from Folk Art and then I just pushed those into the paint sticks. I also completed the top of the sign by just taking some rope from the Dollar Tree and making a loop. 
Now I'm taking my orange and white gingham ribbon. I did pick this up at Hobby Lobby. I couldn't find anything like it at the Dollar Tree, but it was only $1.99 on sale at Hobby Lobby. So now that Dollar Tree has increased its price, it wasn't so much more expensive. And basically I just formed this into an upside down Christmas tree. That's what I had in mind. Just zigzagging the ribbon back and forth. Of course, you're going to want wired ribbon. Otherwise you're gonna have to use a lot of hot glue to make sure your ribbon stays in that zigzag formation. But it was really easy to make. Again, I just kept in mind that I was creating an upside down Christmas tree. It was easier to think of that than have to imagine a carrot shape. For the top of my carrot, I would have liked to have a little bit more of a darker green greenery to put on top of this, but I couldn't find any at two Dollar Trees that I went to. So I just went into my florals stash and picked this out. I thought it looked the closest to the top of a carrot. And I did hot glue the bottom and middle section of ribbon down onto my sign so that it stayed in place. And then I just peeled the top of my ribbon carrot back so that I could adhere the greenery down with a glue stick. And then I made a little bow out of the same ribbon and hot glued that to the top where the greenery met with the ribbon. This was a really easy DIY to make, but I really like how unique and different that it came out. The next DIY transforms a brightly colored tinsel Dollar Tree decor piece and turns it into a really simple rustic piece of Easter decor. Here's everything that you'll need to recreate this. This bright tinsel basket from the Dollar Tree is a about to get deconstructed. I grabbed a pair of my scissors and just cut the tinsel and then was able to pull it off of the basket. And I was very pleased to see underneath, you kind of have this plastic form. I also pulled off the eggs, but I am gonna save those because you never know when you could use some little mini eggs in an Easter DIY. And the basket did come apart, which came in handy when I was covering the handle and jute. It was a lot easier to kind of pull these two apart and weave the jute through. Once I was done with the handle, I put the basket back together and then quickly just began running the jute all the way around our plastic basket. All right, so all of our fake basket weaving is done. So I grabbed some ribbon from the Dollar Tree and just along the top section, I hot glued it to kind of cover up a little bit of that plastic and also to add some color. I finished this off with a tiny little bow made of the exact same ribbon. And now that our basket is complete on the outside, we have to fill up the inside. And I am using my very beloved jute carrots from the Dollar Tree. Let me know in the comments down below if your Dollar Trees have the jute carrots in. I've seen them at two of my stores, but I can't tell if they're leftover stock from last year or if they're an item that they have brought back again for this year. So I just placed three of them in. One I did hot glue, but the other two were able to just sit in the basket. And then I completed it by taking some raffia and just tucking it in the back and all along the sides of our carrots. This DIY is something that can be used as a piece of freestanding decor in your home or something that you can hang on your front door. Here are all of the supplies that you'll need to make it. In this DIY, I am actually using all new items, or at least new to me, for the Easter season from Hobby Lobby and Dollar Tree. I saw that the Dollar Tree came out with these new eggs. One side is white and almost looks like a faux wood, and one side is that plain MDF board. 
I also loved the scrapbooking paper that Hobby Lobby had out. So I am using that to cover the plain side of the egg. And then the white side is going to be at the back. And I love that because I don't have to paint it or add paper. It'll still look pretty even if you catch it from the back or the side. I am creating a large bow in one of my new and favorite techniques. I went extremely in depth about how to create this type of bow in one of my Christmas videos. So I will link that. However, in that video, I used ribbon that was not double sided and that did not have wire. And I can officially say that it is so much easier when you use a plain colored ribbon that doesn't have a right or a wrong side and that has a wire because you're really able to customize it so much more and move the ribbon and it just worked out a lot easier than my Christmas one. But I do go into a lot of depth of how to create this bow. So again, that is linked above. And how I keep everything in this bow together is with a zip tie, but if you don't have that, you can use string, yarn, jute, maybe even some hot glue. That would be a little difficult, but you could do it. So don't worry if you don't have a zip tie. So then once I cut off the back of the zip tie, I was able to cut the tails of my bow and really fluff it up and give it a nice place on the top of my scrapbooking papered egg. To go in the center of my bow, I picked up these really cute mini wood bunnies from the Dollar Tree and added a little bit of stain to it so it had some color before hot gluing it, like I said, to the center of the bow. And when I'm placing the bow on the egg, I'm making sure that it's up at the top so that even when it's laying down or standing up straight, you won't be able to see the very top of the egg. And I also cinched in the ribbon a little bit to give it texture and then moved the tails a little bit closer to the middle of the egg because when they were hanging off the sides, you kind of lost that egg shape. Like I said, you could use this as a hanging sign. You would just hot glue the rope that it came with back on to the wood egg, but I wanted this to be a standing and a kind of foolproof way to create some standing decor is by taking two of the Dollar Tree's tumbling tower blocks and hot gluing them to the bottom back of your sign. And then instantly you have a, what used to be hanging sign turned into a piece of freestanding decor. This spring DIY Dollar Tree frame. This is one of my favorite frames to use from the Dollar Tree. It has this really beautiful faux wood frame. I have used this quite a few times. I've painted it white before. It's again, one of my favorite frames. So if you see this in your Dollar Tree, be sure to pick it up. They also make it a little bit smaller, but I'm going to be using the eight by 10 frame for this DIY. So you could just use some plain black cardstock or even paint this backing black, but I had picked up some of these chalkboard giant stickers from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna need basically like one and a half of one. So I am placing this down and using this little roller tool to just make sure there's no air bubbles. There is going to be one in the center of the frame because that's where some of the pins were, but the wreath that we'll eventually be adding is going to cover this up so it doesn't really matter for now. I just wanted to make sure that any large air bubbles were covered, so that's why I'm using essentially that rolling pin tool. It's from Mod Podge if you're curious or want to pick it up, but it does help more so with vinyl, but also with really any type of a sticker material. And once that is placed down and I've trimmed the edges of our backing, I am going ahead and placing that into our frame and using the pins to make sure it stays in place. Again, there are some of those air bubbles where basically, I'm not even sure what it's called, I'm calling it the pins, but the metal sections of the frame were. If you used cardstock, this would be a good reason to use that because it would hide the air bubbles. But when I add in the wreath and the florals, you really can't see it. So I am taking this wreath. I got it from Hobby Lobby last year after the Easter and spring season when it was on sale. So I got this for $2.99, which especially with the increase in Dollar Tree prices is quite a good deal because I've been able 
able to reuse this frame for quite a few spring projects. You will notice that I'm using some Dollar Tree floral picks, mostly greenery with some pops of purple. And I don't have to use hot glue or anything. I'm just able to tuck the greenery and the florals right into this rustic wreath. So it's really great because I'm able to, again, reuse this wreath again and again because I don't have to use any hot glue. I'm using some Dollar Tree burlap wire ribbon to make one of my favorite bows lately. You create this small loop and then a larger loop on each side. You're always pinching at the center. And with ribbon like this, which doesn't have a right or a wrong side and has wire so you can really easily form it, it's the best to use. I will link above a very detailed tutorial on how to make this bow. I actually made it during the Christmas season and I made it with a material that did have a right or wrong side and did not have wire. So it was difficult. So I went into a very detailed way of how to make this. So again, check out that tutorial if you want an in-depth description on how to make this cute bow. Once I trimmed the tails off at a slight angle, I am ready to attach the wreath to our frame. So I am grabbing some of this thicker jute. I found it in actually the automobile section at the Dollar Tree, which is kind of random. I'm not sure if it was placed there by accident or what, but that is where I have been finding it at my particular Dollar Tree. And I just attached that with a loop on the wreath. And then I added a bit of hot glue to the back, making sure to not put the hot glue on the wreath, just on the area that our thick jute had touched. Same with the bow. I am hot gluing the bow to where that jute is and not to the wreath. So, you know, again, I can reuse this. And then I just tucked that in the back of the frame and added some more hot glue before grabbing one of these beads, which is from the brain teaser game in the children's section of the Dollar Tree. And I am adding that on top of the jute. So it looks like that is what is holding up the wreath when in reality it is that thicker jute and the hot glue. The final touch was just distressing the frame a bit by adding a bit of white paint. The next spring DIY is a really easy one, but I think it's super adorable and would be a great addition to either a tiered tray or an Easter scape. Here are all of the supplies that you're going to need if you want to make this project. I'm taking one of the bunny bags from the Dollar Tree as well as some foam dice from the children's toy section. And originally my plan was to tuck the dice into the bottom of the bunny bag. But unfortunately, when I did that, it came out super blocky and angular and I didn't like it. So I scrapped that idea and went with a more basic solution. I added in some glass beads to the bottom of the bunny bag so it could stand on its own. And then I just filled it up with some stuffing that I got in a giant bag from Joann's. Then to make sure that none of those beads or stuffing fell out, I just placed a clear elastic down and then I used my scissors to cut our bunny's ears more and I went back in with the scissors to really shape the ears at an angle so they actually did look like bunny ears and not just two ends of a bag. To give our girl bunny a little bit of an accessory or some embellishment, I grabbed some of this ribbon that of course I got from the Dollar Tree and it's really pretty. It's almost like a woven jute and I put that around her ears and then made a bow out of that and placed that on top. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a super easy DIY, but it was fun to do and I think would be really great to do with kids. You could let them accessorize their bunnies in whichever way they like. This next spring DIY is not only a really pretty decor piece, but it's actually a functional game of tic-tac-toe. Here are all of the supplies that you'll need to recreate this. I'm starting off with a frame that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and I had used it in a previous DIY a while ago. So to make the background prettier, I am taking some of this sticker wallpaper that I got from the Dollar Tree and laying that down. I also 
grabbed some wood dowels and I painted them in a dark gray color. And this is going to be the start of our tic-tac-toe board. I'm just laying these down and trying to make sure that I get them pretty even. I did discover that I had to bring out my measuring tape. Really, it's just my Cricut board and actually measure it. But once I figured out the measurements of how I wanted my board to go, I grabbed some hot glue and just laid our wood dowels down so that we had the start of our tic-tac-toe board game. The Dollar Tree came out with absolutely adorable little Easter themed wood pieces this year. So I picked up the little chicks and the Easter eggs and I painted them the chicks pretty traditional and then I made the Easter eggs a dark purple color with some white embellishments. And these are going to be our tic-tac-toe board game pieces. If you want to use this as just decor, you could add some hot glue or a glue dot to the back. But for me, I really wanted this to be an actual tic-tac-toe board game that I could play during the Easter season. So I just used a bit of tape to hold these up for a picture and then I peeled it off so I can actually use this as a board game. The next DIY is a super quick and easy one, making some clothespin carrots. Here's what you need. For this DIY, I'm going to be making two carrots, so I need two clothespins. And the first step is going to be taking the clothespins apart so you pull off that metal section. And you can see I kind of put them together and that's the shape of the carrot that we're going to be going with. But before we hot glue those together, first we have to paint the clothespins. So I am grabbing this orange color. It's actually called Pumpkin by Waverly. And I'm painting all four pieces of these clothespins and then letting them dry. Once the clothespin pieces have dried, it's time to assemble our carrots. I'm taking one side of the clothespins, adding some hot glue, and then adding the flat sides together and pressing them to make sure that they hold. I'm going to be using four pieces of jute to create the greenery at the top of the carrot. I just grabbed my jute from the Dollar Tree and cut off four pieces and then I hot glued them to each side of our carrot and to kind of cover it up and make it look a little bit more pretty, I am then adding a bit of hot glue and wrapping the jute around where we attached the four pieces of jute that are coming off the top of the carrots just so that we don't have any raw edges and this just kind of finishes things off and makes it look a little bit prettier. Once the jute has been attached, it's time to make them actually look like the greenery at the top of the carrot. At first, I used the shade Celery by Waverly, but I thought it was a little bit too light, so I went in with a darker green color and just went over the top. I also added two very small buffalo check bows to our carrots and a little tag that said Cottontail Carrot Company. First up is this Farm Fresh Carrot Patch sign. Here are all of the supplies that you're going to need if you want to recreate this fun spring project. I'm going to be using a lot of editing magic in this first DIY so that I don't waste too much of your time just showing you how to paint and add scrapbooking paper to two of the Dollar Tree's tag signs. I just used scrapbooking paper from Hobby Lobby on one of the signs and then I used some Waverly white chalk paint and then distressed it with a little bit of brown paint on the front tag sign. And now I'm just trying to figure out how I want the tags to be. And once I figured out how I want them lined up, overlapping on one another, I just took a pencil to mark out exactly where I want to hot glue down that first sign onto the scrapbook paper one. And the real trick when you're making this overlapping tag sign is just to make sure that you really push down with your hands to make sure that they are both adhered properly. The Dollar Tree has these tag signs out all the time, but for some reason, I'm not sure if my store just had a box in stock, but a lot of the summer ones that I know from last year, they have had hanging around. So that's where I got a lot of these. 
and I wanted a big bow at the top of my tag sign, so I grabbed some burlap fabric ribbon and went ahead and made that. If you want a tutorial on exactly how to make this type of a ribbon, I will go ahead and link it above. I did a very thorough tutorial on this during Christmas time that I think explains it really well. So again, I'll be sure to link that above. To match the scrapbooking paper on the behind tag sign, I took one of these wooden carrots from the Dollar Tree and covered it in a Buffalo check scrapbooking paper with a little bit of smaller checks and also added a jute bow. Then to finish off the tag sign, I added some vinyl decals that say farm fresh carrot patch. The next DIY might just be the cutest one in the whole video and the main supply is a sock. Here are all of the other things that you're going to need if you want to recreate this really easy and adorable sock bunny. I'm starting off with one sock from the Dollar Tree. This pack of the Dollar Tree actually came with three pairs of socks, which I thought was a really good deal. So now I have five more single socks that I can use in another DIY. But I'm taking this sock, of course, a white one because my bunny is going to be white. And I am filling it with some of these glass beads that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. But you could also do rocks that you find in your backyard or any other weighted item, maybe even some pennies. And I'm putting that in the bottom of the sock just so that the bunny can stand up on its own. Next, I took some stuffing or filling that I have from Joanne Fabrics. I have a really big bag of it. I got it for pretty cheap and I reuse it a lot for different projects, but you could also use some plastic grocery store bags that would also work as a filling. And I'm adding more towards the bottom and still a good amount of filling towards the top but a little bit less because the head of our bunny, I want it to be a bit smaller. And that's of course going to be at the top. And then I want his body to be a bit more round. And to create this division, I'm just taking a clear hair elastic. You could also tie it with jute or even a rubber band. And I'm putting that over the sock and then pulling it down so that it creates a division between the stuffing and the socks so that I have this larger circle down at the bottom for the bunny's body and this smaller circle up at the top to be the bunny's head. To complete the bunny's head, I'm taking another of those clear elastic hair ties and putting that at the top of the bunny's head. And the next step is going to determine the length of the bunny's ears. I wanted mine really long, so I left the sock at the length that it was. But if you want some shorter bunny ears, then you are going to trim off where the cuff of the sock is just to make it a little bit shorter. But again, I wanted some pretty long ears, so I'm grabbing my fabric scissors and cutting right down the center at the top of our sock. And you can really start to see form the shape of the bunny's ears. I liked them long and floppy, but they weren't quite in the shape of a bunny's ears. So I grabbed each side again and cut them at an angle just so that they had more of that angular shape of a bunny's ears. And you'll notice that when I did cut, it became a lot stiffer and was able to stand up on its own. I didn't have a bunch of fabric flopping all over the place, but if you wanted it to be even more secure, you could add some hot glue or maybe a little bit of tape on the inside of the bunny ears just to make sure that they stayed together and stood up but the sock I picked from the Dollar Tree was working really well for me and they were able to stand up and stay together on their own. Next, I moved on to accessorizing our little sock bunny. So I grabbed some of this really pretty plaid ribbon from, of course, the Dollar Tree and wrapped it around what I would call his neck where his head and his body of the sock meet and just tied that around and fixed it with a bow before trimming off the long sides of the ribbon so they weren't longer than his actual body. For the face, I went really simple, just taking a black marker and adding two little eyes and then an X for his nose mouth area. But you could get really creative with this. You could add some googly eyes. You could take some yarn pieces and add whiskers to the bunny. This would be a fun one to do with kids where you can create the bunny with them and then let them decide how they want to decorate the face. 
Even though you can't really see the cotton tail in the beginning picture, I of course needed my bunny to have a cotton tail. So I grabbed one of my glue dots from the Dollar Tree and just adhered a little pom-pom to his back. This spring DIY only needed a few supplies to transform it into a fun and colorful spring craft. Here's everything that you'll need to make this. When I saw this galvanized bunny sign in my Dollar Tree, I had absolutely no idea what I was going to make with it, but it was the first time that I had seen it at my store and I've only seen it like once since I've been back. So I knew it was a pretty hot item and it just kind of sat in my craft stash for a couple of weeks while I was thinking of ideas with the galvanized edge. It's kind of hard to turn something that's a bit more modern into a farmhouse DIY, but I decided to only use the galvanized part on the edges, almost like a frame. And then on the center area of this bunny sign, I grabbed some white paint and painted it so again it just looked like it had that galvanized edged finish. After I painted everything white I did go in with a little bit of pink paint just to accentuate the bunny's ears. I've been absolutely loving this pink paint for spring. It is called Seashell Pink by Folk Art and I'm only mentioning it because I have literally used it in almost every single video I have done this spring. I'm almost out of the bottle of paint, so if you're ever at the store and you see this one, I really suggest picking it up. Might not look much, but it works really great for spring crafting. Once my paint was dry, I moved on to adding some floral embellishments. These are wood flowers from Sola Wood Flowers. I have a couple bags of them and I chose the pink, kind of this off blue green one, and then an ivory toned one. And these are going to be the main floral arrangement in the corner of our bunny. I also know that the Dollar Tree has had some wood flowers in the past, but you could also pick them up at Michael's and even Joann's. And I really like the way that the flowers looked, but I wanted to add a little bit of greenery as well. So I had this purple and greenery floral pick from the Dollar Tree. So I just picked off little duos of petals from it and these small purple flowers that were also on it and hot glued those two together and then added them into the blank spaces where the florals were so that there wasn't any empty space. I wanted the flowers to look like they had leaves and were very abundant and you know not too sparse. I didn't want too much white or blank area. I really liked the thicker jute hanger that the sign already came with so to complete this DIY I went ahead and just strung that back through the holes in the bunny's ears. This is a little bonus DIY that I wanted to add in to the end of the video because it's so easy and I think would be really fun to make with kids. Here's everything that you're going to need if you wanna recreate this pipe cleaner carrot garland. To start off this really easy DIY, I am taking a few orange pipe cleaners or chenilles from the Dollar Tree. They came in this large pack and I just picked out the orange ones. And this is super easy. The bottom section, I am just twisting around a pencil. Then in the middle section, I'm twisting it around one of my fingers. And then the very top, I twisted it around two fingers, just so you get that small to large springiness that a carrot would naturally have in the shape of a triangle. And I just continue doing this with the rest of the pipe cleaners. Again, this one is super easy, but I think that's why it'd be really fun to do with kids. They can play with the pipe cleaners. It's easy to create the shapes. You don't even really have to use the pencil. You could just use your fingers and your hands to shape this, just making sure that it is smaller and more tightly coiled at the bottom and then a bit larger at the top. So it does resemble that carrot. To embellish the pipe cleaner carrots just a little bit, I pulled one of these greenery pieces that I have that I had picked up at the Dollar Tree. I thought it looked very much like the greenery at the top of a carrot, so I just cut out a little bit for each of them and then used a bit of hot glue to adhere it to the back. 
Be careful if you are doing this craft with kids. You don't want them to be handling the hot glue, but you could always go in with some plain old craft glue instead. Now you can have the carrots, use them as a bowl filler or just as some decor, even put a magnet on the back and put them on the fridge. But if you wanted to turn them into a garland, I grabbed some of these string lights from the Dollar Tree and the lights fit perfectly down into the carrots. And then I was able to just coil around the top of the pipe cleaner carrot around the light and they hung perfectly off the garland. This would be really cute in a playroom or a kid's room to help celebrate the spring and Easter season. We have this adorable bunny sign that is perfect for the upcoming Easter holiday. Here's everything you need to make it. I didn't see these signs last year, so I think they're new, but let me know if you did. And one side actually has a really beautiful, almost shiplap looking texture, but I wanted a smooth surface to adhere some scrapbooking paper onto. So I am actually going to be using the backside of the bunny. And I did take off the little hanger. It had a jute hanger with it, and I just easily was able to take that off. And my paper is from Hobby Lobby. Pretty much all my scrapbooking paper I get from there. They do sales a lot of the time where you can usually get four sheets of scrapbooking paper for only a dollar. So it's a pretty good deal, especially now that the Dollar Tree has increased their prices. And now that I've cut that out, there's a couple different ways you can adhere it. You can use a glue stick, you can use Mod Podge, you can use hot glue. I was going for the easy route, so I just went in with a glue stick. Just make sure to press a little bit harder on the scrapbooking paper when you're adhering it if you are going to use a glue stick instead of, say, Mod Podge. To make a bow, I am doing one that has quickly become my favorites. Per usual, I will link the full tutorial above, but I really like it because there's very minimal cutting involved when making this bow. So if you make a mistake, it's not a big deal. You haven't gone ahead and cut out a bunch of ribbon. And I just use some jute to tie everything together. But in the past, I've also used a zip tie, especially when I'm making a larger bow. I also picked up a set of three different galvanized signs from the Dollar Tree, so I am taking the bunny one and placing that in the lower half right underneath our burlap bow. I thought that I was done here, but I wanted to add on a little bit more embellishment, kind of make it a little bit more rustic. So I am grabbing some of this larger jute. I actually found this in the automotive section at the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure if that's where yours is, but I found a really big roll of this. So that is what I am using to outline our entire bunny sign. And then to kind of complement it at the end, I added on one of the jute carrots. You can lean this against something, but if you want it to stand on its own, I just placed a couple of Jenga blocks or tumbling tower blocks behind the legs and it would stand up on its own. Next is a quick and easy spring DIY, but it brings a great touch of a farmhouse into any decor. Here's how you can recreate it. As I mentioned earlier, I am using some Hobby Lobby scrapbooking paper yet again. This one is more of a neutral pattern with some bunnies on it. And I only need one piece of this, so I am taking one of the wood bunny ornaments from the Dollar Tree, tracing it out, and then cutting it out of the scrapbooking paper. And the reason that I only need one black one, you're not gonna really see, so I'll end up staining it. And I wanted this to be a much thicker wood ornament so that it would almost stand up on its own. So I am going to be layering three wood ornaments together. I'll end up gluing those. And that is just gonna make it look like a larger piece of decor instead of a flat ornament. As you can see, I'm showing you how much thicker it is in the video. 
So once I had glued down the scrapbooking paper to the front of our bunnies, I am taking that back bunny and just covering it in some stain. You don't have to do this step, especially if you're putting it on a mantle or leaning against somewhere, but just in case my eye were to see it, I didn't want to have an unfinished back. So that's why I'm staining my wood bunny ornaments. And while I had my stain out, I figured I may as well stain all the other items that I'm going to be using. I picked up this wood, I would say plaque, from the crafters square section. And that is going to be the base that our bunnies stand on. And I wanted one bunny to be higher up than the other. So I actually went into my craft stash that I have and I found this one wood piece that looks like a thimble and then a wood almost looks like a button, like a wood button. Um, I had so many bags of these and I remember getting them really cheap at a garage sale, but I know that Hobby Lobby, Michaels, any craft store would also sell something similar. And while I'm waiting for the stain to dry on some of those items, I am moving ahead and hot gluing my bunny ornaments together. I did three ornaments to create one thick bunny. And then I kind of had the idea to do one girl bunny and one boy bunny. I don't know, but basically one of the bunnies I gave a little jute bow to, and then I just hot glued that to the front. So I pretended that was the girl bunny with her little bow. And then I started placing them how I saw fit onto the wood plaque. And while you watch me doing this, I did just want to give one final reminder that I'm actually running a sale in my Etsy shop right now on my bunny bags. They are ready to ship, so they will be there in time for Easter. And again, I am running a sale. It's only going to be going on up until Easter, so check them out if you are interested. And back to the video. So you see that I hot glued down the spool and button kind of looking wood pieces. And then I hot glued one bunny on top of that. And then our girl bunny with the jute bow, I hot glued in front and I couldn't help myself. I almost didn't put them on, but I figured I have to, I can only ever do this on an Easter craft. So I picked up two of the little cotton pom-poms and I hot glued those to the bunnies. This is an easy and quick DIY for those who want a touch of spring in their homes, but may not have a lot of time to craft. Here's everything you'll need to recreate this. I've talked about these frames in a couple other DIY videos, but they are hands down my favorite. So if you ever see these at your Dollar Tree, make sure to pick them up. It has a really beautiful faux wood finish that works for farmhouse, modern, really any style of decor that you're going for. To complete this DIY, I grabbed some lavender colored cardstock that I already had on hand and just cut it down to size so that it would fit in the frame. And unlike a lot of my other DIYs where I take out the glass, I am actually leaving the glass in. And that's because I came across these gorgeous window clings from the Dollar Tree. I hadn't seen these at all. And then last week when I popped in, just when I thought I couldn't find anything new at the Dollar Tree, I found these. And I loved the bunny with the flower crown. I thought it was so cute. So I immediately had an idea to use a window cling in a little bit of a different way. Also a good tip, if you have a backsplash in your kitchen, if it's like a subway tile, these window clings do stick. I have used that during the holiday season. I put up some window cling gingerbread bin from the Dollar Tree. This is a super quick and easy DIY. It doesn't require a lot of work, but it still brings that pop of spring into your home. The Dollar Tree came out with these mini spring themed wood pieces this year, and I knew I had to use them in a DIY before the Easter season was over. Here's everything that you'll need to make these modern pieces of spring art.
The Dollar Tree has these different signs really for every season. This one just happened to be one that I picked up during Valentine's Day, but they are out pretty much all year long just with various sayings. All that I did to cover this one up was flip it over and add in some white cardstock. Then I picked my bunny ornaments and some fun spring colors and painted each of them, some half, some whole, in all sorts of different colors and in the ways that I painted. Then to adhere them onto our sign, I just took some peel and stick stickers and that way I was able to remove the bunnies when it was time and do the exact same thing with the small wood egg pieces. I used the same colors and same styles. I couldn't pick which one was my favorite, but the good thing about not using hot glue and instead using the peel and stick stickers is that they were really easy to remove and add back on. So you could really do this with any of the wood pieces the Dollar Tree came out with. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.